Hey folks, today is Friday, February 26th, 2021. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Now, I just want to say, pardon our mess. I mean, like, well, it's always kind of messy here. But uh, we are finally moving. We're moving out. This is the last Friday show here in this now nearly empty void. Uh, so thank you for all of you have been who have been watching for this like saga of the show. We've moved a couple times throughout the years, but next week we'll be in a new place. Setup might be a little temporary, but overall the show's gonna look a little different. Nothing's really changing yet. But thank you, pardon our dust. Thanks for bearing with us. We got a lot of video game news to talk about and things to get you caught up on this week. So let's just jump in. The first story I think is kind of a win if you look at it this way. So according to a new insider report, the next Dragon Age game that EA has been working on has had a fundamental shift in development and where it's going. Apparently, this new Dragon Age game was intended to be a multiplayer-focused, live-service-games-as-a-service type game. Uh, the, the report actually mentioned something like Anthem with Dragons, which sounds insane. I can only imagine like the amount of let-down Dragon Age players if this was the case, but... The report suggests that things have changed and turned around. Uh, it also points to a lot of different leadership departures, which we have covered oh, in the past couple of years now at this point. But apparently this was a conscious decision by EA themselves. Andrew Wilson, we talked about a couple of m weeks or months back, talked about how single player games are still a priority for the publisher. And that is the case. Apparently they'd seen the success of other games that they are publishing and putting out, like Jedi Fallen Order. And then on the other hand, with issues like Anthem and stuff like that, how they got burned trying those games and falling on their face, led them to change and kind of make a more traditional single player Dragon Age game. That's what this report suggests. Of course, it is not official, so take it with a grain of salt, but this reporting is pretty likely from at least what I know and what I've followed. So that sounds like a win. Single player games are winning out today. The companies are once again starting to embrace them. I don't think they've ever gone away, but there has been a little bit of like a like a murmur with them, with the big AAA companies. I'm happy that maybe this is going to be a trend moving forward. But of course, with everything rising, some things have to fall. And another report suggests that Anthem is now finally dead. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this story a couple weeks back, but Bioware had been working on Anthem next. This was like their big roadmap, their big complete overhaul of the game to kind of save it and, and hopefully give people that spent $60 on this game at least something of worth. And EA was going to review the project and the progress of it and decide whether or not to keep giving it money and let it go forward. And apparently they have decided not to continue Anthem. So... Uh, rest in peace, Anthem. You're still going to be able to play it as it exists today, but if you were hoping for some big next update, unfortunately, you're not gonna get it. Let this be a lesson, maybe a learning lesson for both Bioware and EA. I hope only good things can come out of this. It sucks for the people that had to work on the next update and then have it canned, but maybe there's a bright side to this. Do you possibly think EA could see the error of its ways finally once and for all and be good and turn it all around? No, definitely not. But maybe a little bit here and there, I'll take that. Are they, in another report, they also apparently canceled a game called Gaia, which they had been working on with EA Motive for like four years. That is a big hit, dude. So a lot of shifts are happening, whether it be the creative process, the financial process behind these games, um, the pandemic related stuff. I don't know, but wow, a lot is going on. Then of course, also uh, we have the state of play. We're actually recording this later on Thursday. So if we're behind on some news, but the state of play dropped. Sony had some news for some new games. The biggest thing was Final Fantasy VII Remake getting PlayStation 5 upgrades, uh, big graphical updates, a photo mode overhaul, stuff like that, uh, different frame rate modes. But also it's part of this whole thing called Final Fantasy Remake Intergrade. I think that's what it's called. It's coming out uh, June 10th, I believe, and that is the PlayStation 5 upgrade, which is actually going to be free, which is pretty cool. But on the other hand, we're also getting new content, kind of like a side chapter focusing on Yuffie with different playable characters and a little side adventure which seems pretty cool, it seems pretty fully featured, though as of right now, at the time of making this video, it does seem like that might be exclusive to PlayStation 5 owners, which seems like a bad move on everybody's part, because there's a lot of people out there that still can't get their hands on a PlayStation 5 if they want one. That might be updated, I don't know for sure, but again, at the time of making this video, I think on the other hand, it is nice that they are making the PS4 to PS5 upgrade free, 
that doesn't usually seem like a Square Enix move, so it's good to see it. We also got an updated version of the newest Crash game, Crash 4, it's about time, releasing in March for PlayStation 5. We got new Returnal gameplay. I'm so excited for this game. I don't know why, I just, it looks awesome. There's also these new first person sequences we got to see. Knockout City, a game that was revealed during a Nintendo Direct last week. I got a lot more gameplay here, and now that I see the raw gameplay, I'm a little more interested. We got a look at the new Five Nights at Freddy's game, which was previously revealed, but now we have a real good look at some gameplay, and it's called Security Breach. Not really my thing, but uh, hey. The new Oddworld game, finally. At long, they've been working on this game forever. It's apparently coming to PlayStation April 6th. We got a new Deathloop trailer, uh, Kina and the Bridge of Spirits. I thought it was gonna come out in March, a lot of people did, but it's coming out in August and it still looks pretty damn good. And I saved my favorite thing for last, personally, a new game called Sifu from the developers behind Absolver, that kick-ass fighting game. This is a new kick-ass fighting game that's set in a bit more of a realistic sense. It looks like if you die, you get older, and the combat looks cool. It takes the great, brilliant gameplay ideas and fighting mechanics from Absolver, puts it in a new scenario. I am very excited. This shot up to the top of my list for most anticipated stuff because I loved Absolver. I love what it did for the combat. This could be even better, dude. But the state of play was pretty even keeled. You know, I like the things that they announced, but there was nothing like blowing the doors down like Ratchet and Clank gameplay, which I kind of expected because the game isn't th that far off. Um, also, maybe a little bit of a glimpse at Horizon or maybe a tease about Ragnarok. I don't know. I've been saying it. I think it's going to be a quieter year. There's still gonna be good stuff and good stuff to catch up on, but overall, like maybe a little less action packed, you know? Next up, this episode is brought to you by Vessi. Now, this footwear company has had our back for a while now because we enjoy wearing their shoes straight up. They're legit, they're dependable, they're straightforward, and then the most important thing is that they're actually comfortable. They've been really great daily drivers for us personally here. They slip on nice and easy and most importantly, they're waterproof, which is really cool. They're breathable yet weatherproof at the same time. I know that sounds crazy, but it's because of this new Dymatex dual climate knit material. It's also been really good because we've been getting a lot of snow here in New York and sometimes I just don't like the bulk of work boots or snow boots for certain situations. And the Vessi kicks have handled snow like no problem. They're stretchy and they're grippy and they come in a bunch of cool different colors and designs depending on who you are. So if you want to check them out, all you got to do is go to the link in the description. It's also on screen here and use our code GAMERANKS to get $25 off your order. That's VessiFootwear.com slash GAMERANKS and thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring our videos. Now in other news, a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about this. I, this is so old, I don't even know where to go anymore. Uh, so a Chicago lawmaker has proposed banning violent video games, most notably, say it with me now, Grand Theft Auto V. Yep, this politician is equating like a rise in specifically carjackings in the Chicago area directly to Grand Theft Auto because you can carjack. Uh, uh, hmm, we've been having the same argument for like tw 20, 30 years now, and it's always been the same. And there's been studies, there's been debates, there's been arguments uh, from a lot of people much smarter than me, but my personal take is like, yes, I think some video game violence, like some video games may desensitize us to violence in some ways, but ultimately at the end of the day, it is technically all cartoon violence. It's not real. And at, I know any video game is certainly not going to train me to go out and steal someone's car. Are you kidding me? I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna talk to the UPS guy. I can't even like get my change at the counter at the store without having an anxiety attack, let alone stealing someone's car. Where am I going with this? This is representative Marcus Evans Jr. And this isn't really political. This is just me saying, good luck, dude. What are you doing? There's a lot of other things to focus on, but I digress. Anyway, if you wanna read up on the whole thing, the whole detail and everything else I talk about, it's all linked down in the description. Speaking of linking things though, link down there, a couple of things I wanted to show you guys. The first, surprise, a new System Shock trailer with some gameplay. This thing went totally dormant and I didn't know what was gonna happen, but Night Dive still seems to be behind it. It looks great. There's a little trailer there, cool. Also, we got a new trailer for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which is like the spiritual successor to the Jet Set Radio, Jet Grind Radio, those games from the Dreamcast days. This really feels like a homecoming, it is so, Cool to see these games with incredible music, the same art style. It looks like the gameplay might be spiced up and modernized a little bit and a little more engaging than it even was back then, which I already think it was still pretty bulletproof back then, but. And of course, breaking news now that Pokemon Company has had their big direct event and we got some news. So Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are being remade into Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond. Pretty much 
how you would expect. Looks cool. This is releasing in 2021 for Nintendo Switch. The bigger thing is Pokemon Legends Ar Arceus? Arceus. This is releasing in early 2022, and it is in the Sinnoh region, but it looks like a prequel. M more old-style villages, old-style Pokeballs. The first Pokedex was mentioned, and it's a new direction for Game Freak. This seems potentially pretty cool. It seems like there's still turn-based battles, but there is real-time capturing of the Pokemon and a little bit more open-world stuff going on. It looks early, very framey, if I'm being honest, but I'm excited to see what comes of this. I know, I feel like the last Pokemon game, people were very divided on it. I think that's just going to continue, honestly. But hey, this could be pretty cool. Yay, Pokemon! But that's all the time we have today. That's all we can talk about. I, I gotta run. So I want to hear from you guys what you think about the state of play, of course. What were you expecting? What was your favorite thing that you did get to see? What do you think about this politician trying to ban Grand Theft Auto? I am so tired. <laughs> also, the biggest thing, EA, what do you think? Are you happy that the next Dragon Age is turning seemingly maybe in a positive direction? Or would you have been one of the people down to dive into a multiplayer live service focused Dragon Age game? Maybe you love that world? I don't know. Let's talk about all the stuff going on this week. There's a lot. So I want to hear from you guys. Things get a little chaotic in the comments though, like I say. So if you want to yell at me directly, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But hey, if you had a good time getting caught up on the news here from the week, clicking the like button helps us out a lot. We would really appreciate that. And of course, if you're new, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But I'm Jake Baldino. I'm here every Friday giving you the news. I'm on those before you buy videos. Check me out there. Thanks for watching. Pizza's on me.